scientists or engineers that you know of? I currently don't know any. <laughs> off the top of my head, I really can't remember. Um, I really don't know any off the top of my head. Okay. What about you? Do you recognize any of these people, those people or their um, inventions? That if you do, just read them out. What you know, what you recognize, who you recognize. Traffic light, I remember hearing something about like when I was younger. Shirley Jackson <laughs> sounds familiar. I recognize the traffic light, um, the fax machine. Yeah, the traffic light. I knew the traffic light was invented by a black man. Traffic light, cell phone. I do not recognize none of the scientists. Okay, fine. What was your strongest subject in high school? Uh, physics. Chemistry? They had it in math. Um, it was probably math or English. My name is Sekazi Kauze Mtingwa, and I'm a senior lecturer here at MIT. My name is Cardinal Ward. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at MIT. I'm Paula Hammond, and I'm a professor in chemical engineering at MIT. I first recognized that science and math was my academic strength when I was in high school. Uh, most of my teachers, especially for science, were women. And uh, that made a difference because I was sat in the front and was very attentive. And as a result, uh, I ended up uh, treating math, chemistry, physics as my favorite subject. I think I always liked science and math. When I was a small child, I actually did very well in math classes. I did well in science, I did, but I also did well in English. I, I liked school and I liked learning. As far back as I can remember, I've always been interested in, in science and math. But I think what happened, um, I was born Michael Von Sawyer. And I remember we used to read in school about these German scientists and they would always have these white lab coats on. So I think looking back, that is what, I, what really got me into thinking about maybe, hey, science may be something to do in the future. I think that science, math, and technology is all around us. Um, we use it every day. Oh, I think it's absolutely vital. Science, technology, mathematics, all those things today are of utmost importance. Society as we know it and the progress of mankind is foundational. It's, it's built on that science and technology. I guess when, when there was a feeder program here at uh, Brockton High for RTN, um, they presented uh, Robert R. Taylor, and that was the first time I've actually learned about a black scientist. Probably in high school, we had uh, uh, parents come in and talk about their backgrounds. And I know that there was one other parent among the small number of black students who was a scientist. There's not a lot of people who are interested in this field because uh, it's an urban uh, like area, so it's basically sports, and like people try to go in more into sports than into math, science, or technology. Today's kids, uh, I think for the most part, uh, they use technology a lot, but they, they somehow take it for granted and maybe think it's magic. So if you ask a kid, do you have any idea how the cell phone works? And I think this is true for grown-ups too. They have no clue. Uh, it is magic. You can pick up your phone and talk to someone in Australia, uh, pressing a few keys. So it's that magic that you know I want to get kids curious about. And it's, it's difficult. Well, most of my friends don't really like science and math because uh, they think it's hard to learn or uh, they just can't, they can't grasp, grasp the knowledge. I think um, nowadays it's a lot more about being cool rather than um, pursuing something that'll help you in the future. I think I would explain to them the things that got me excited about science, which is that you can actually use it to transform lives, literally. I think that young people of color have a very specific vantage point. Uh, they understand a large number of the problems in this world, and I think the only way those problems will get addressed is if we become involved in solving them. And how do you feel about the fact that blacks in science are viewed as an exception? I don't know, viewed as unfortunate, I guess. And I think that's sort of odd. 
it should be you know, based on talent, and you shouldn't have to go that extra level in order to find a talented black scientist, because there should be lots of them out there. In my whole career, I've always sort of been the only black in my research group. Like, I had a, a situation that I will never forget. I was a young um, postdoc at the University of Maryland, College Park, and we had a professor from the University of Washington who came and gave a, a, a seminar. And after the seminar, there were about three of us standing, and he was talking to us. And I guess it must have been about four of us. And we asked for his papers, right? And he only had three. And we had one more person than he had. So he gave, you know, one person one, he gave me one. He realized he had run out. He took it out of my hand and gave it to the other person, right? And then the person who he gave it to afterwards came and even apologized for this guy. So that was an idiot thing to do. But I mean, the guy didn't think. Right. He just hit his perception of me was I was not so important enough to give me a copy of his paper. I'm very hopeful of, of the young generation. Things have changed. I remember when I first came to MIT, even um, this time around, um, about 10 years ago, um, when the first day of class, you know, the students look stunned. You know, they <laughs> like, he's going to be my, my teacher, right? But I don't even get any of that sense anymore. I mean, it's amazing how things are changing very rapidly. So I find that the young generation, um, say those under 35 or so, are much more tolerant. For young people of color, I realize that there are not a lot of role models that they can follow in terms of getting into science and engineering. But their attitude should be the color of the role model should not matter. Uh, we need more and more minorities in science and engineering and especially in America, if you look around the world, the countries that have made the largest strides in economic development have embraced science and technology to do so. And you can count them on one hand. You know, there's Ireland, Singapore, India, China. These are all, and Brazil, are all now very strong economic and becoming stronger powerhouses, especially Brazil. Brazil is the rising tiger in South America. So I'm saying African countries can do the same thing, but they've got to put a lot of emphasis on science and technology, and, and that means that you have to get the kids involved in these disciplines, which means that education reform is necessary. Uh, if, if the system you have is antiquated, you've got to change it, because it's going to take a generation to turn things around. I would like to go into um a career in technology. I'm actually an aspiring doctor. Um, I plan on becoming a general practitioner when I grow up. I would love to go to a career in science and technology uh, because I think uh, science is about learning how, how things work and how everything connects together and I'm really interested in that. Those of us who do work in this field can actually begin to share with young people how important it is to get involved in the fields that really help you help others and, and science is definitely one of the strongest of those fields. A lot of students uh, are intimidated by the, the, the scale of the projects that they're faced with, the scale of uh, science and they um, they're intimidated by you know, how far science can go. So uh, a lot of times they need, they need direction. I came up during the 60s where there was a lot of talk about you know, uh, revolution and all these kinds of things. In fact, there were revolutions going on all over Africa. And I was a big admirer of Julius Nyeri in Tanzania. Um, so that's why I said, okay, when I finish uh, my PhD at Princeton, I would go and live in Tanzania and teach at the university. Um, so anyway, but I never made it to Tanzania, actually, until just about a year ago. But all along, I was looking, keeping my eyes out um, for being able to contribute. I think that uh, in Africa, uh, depending on which group we worked with, uh, we worked with both African scientists who were already working at universities, and we also met with farmers out on the field. And uh, I think that when we were talking to African scientists, uh, we viewed each other very much as colleagues and uh, felt very excited about talking to each other. Uh, my sense was that for my African colleagues, that the things that they wanted most were perhaps uh, access to more resources so that they could begin continue to grow their programs. When we met with the farmers and the people on the ground, they greeted us with huge amounts of, uh, of welcome and hospitality, and they also greatly revered all of us as scientists. They, they really saw the potential for us as scientists to help them, and we got just uh, a huge response from them. What do you think could be done in schools to make um, minority youth more interested in math and science? 
I guess my thing would be start with the practicalities because I feel like it, it all, all seems so so foreign and irrelevant to like normal life. I just think like you should put something to do like some based on like life experience to make it more challenging, not too much challenging for them to make it more like interesting, like grab their attention, something to like pull them in, like push them away. We cannot give up on the next generation. We've got to encourage them to go into science and technology. So every generation after you will be reaping the benefits of what you do, so you have to pass it on. And what better way to do that than to show someone everything you know in person by hand so they can get that perspective and they can grow as an individual from what you've accomplished through your entire life. That gives them two lives worth of wisdom. I kind of feel like um, next, the next generation of Gates, um, be, um, Bill Gates and all that because it feels like I'm doing something that nobody else is doing and it feels unique actually. A lot of my peers look up to me because of that because they say um, not everyone gets the chance to help bring the next generation into um, becoming leaders so I feel, I feel unique because of that.